Done uh, work with Double F Double R, of course, uh, your record label, as well as London Records back in the day. Who are some of the artists that you've actually championed over the years that you would be most proud of? You know, right in the early days of London, before we even started FFR, um, I mean, the this the scope as an A and R person of, of, of what you would sign tended to come more from the US. So um, you weren't actually signing the artist um, and, and making the record per se, but you would you would what I would do is we'd go in and license um, the artist for the rest of the world and work very very closely with the label and, and and the artist eventually in terms of maybe manipulating what they did a little bit to make it a bit more um, palatable to the rest of the world. So. We had some big successes back then, and, and they're no bigger than working with Run DMC. So, you know, I was able to work with Russell Simmons and Rick Rubin on on um, Rate the Raising Hell album, um, which obviously included Walk This Way, the Aerosmith sample. Mm -hmm. and so that that was a big, big thing for me and a big thing for my reputation. We worked with Sleeping Bag back then, did Joyce Sims, which was a massive album in, in England. It was a kind of platinum record. And then off the back of that kind of start, um, I was able to start my own label. Um, and they're, they're kind of the seminal records probably mean as much as the big hits. I mean, we we, we worked with Salt and Pepper. Um, there was always this thing about running a label of like you've got to pay the bills and you've got to look cool. Mm -hmm. So um, the house music tended to make us look cool, and and then Salt and Pepper paid the bills. <laughs> um, so I think Little Louis, French Kiss will always be. Oh, brilliant! Yeah. Um, you can't really get more important than that. I think as as a part of kind of history of of house music. Um, you know, um, later, I guess you on, could later pretty on working with Goldie um, I was gonna and, say, um, yeah. and, and doing Timeless, it never really sold what we wanted it to sell. It never won the awards that we wanted it to win. But I think now people realize how important a record that was. Um, so that I'll always be very proud of that. Brand new heavies, obviously, um, in the later days. And then just as in kind of, you know, general A&R terms, um, well, just the legacy of the label then. I look back now, it's quite funny that... Um, uh, you know, after I left, after the label was sold, um, and Warner's kind of uh, lost a lot of the contracts eventually. But pe people look back on many of the records that actually didn't work at the time, and they consider them to be absolute classic pieces of, you know, house music history now, like tracks like Degrees of Motion and things like that. So, which actually came from Canada. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I'm, I'm proud of that. I think that when, when you, when you the, the legacy that was left behind was um, was a, was a good one, a strong one. And I, I, it was funny. I was going through immigration yesterday, and uh, the guy actually, one of the guys at the desk actually leaned over and said, "Weren't you the guy that ran FFRR?" <laughs> and he bought a Jazzy Jeff record on FFRR, uh, which I didn't actually sign, but what because it was a worldwide label. Mm -hmm. um, the the guys that ran, the, you know, used it as a as an outlet in Canada actually put Jazzy Jeff on it because it was actually related to the same company, but they wanted to put it on a cool label. But it's quite funny. The yeah. way people remember, and that that was like 15 years ago. So I think I actually have a D mob record that I would. Um, yeah, that was something I wanted to bring. Actually, I forgot. Yeah. And it's funny that Kathy Dennis, who was the singer there, went on, mm -hmm. went on to become one of the most successful kind of pop writers of a generation in worldwide. So yeah, it's good.